All right, there's three more tests that we do for ACL and knee surgery for athletes and patients returning to sport. Now, one of them is called the STAR excursion test. Now, if you look at this, we have a plus pattern on the floor here with like a STAR 45 degree angle pieces of tape left and right. Now, this one is to test your knee stability as well. And what we're aiming for is we're testing forward and then posto meter and posto lateral movement and how far you can go but with this one what we try and do is for the forward one is get that toe on the midline there and we're aiming for the other foot obviously we're testing the knee that you're balancing on we're aiming to see how far the person can squat and reach forward with the other foot now the trick about this is You've got to go as far as you can, but you can't weight bear through the reaching leg. You've got to keep weight bearing through this one. So we're looking at how far can they go, how good is their form as well, how, how wobbly or unstable is their knee. Is their knee rolling in? Are they buckling at the hip? You know, it's not just about how far they go, is their form and their technique good as well? And that gives you clues to work on because if they are not going very far and they're doing this sort of thing, well, maybe that's the issue is they need to work on their knee stability, not just the strength thing. So these things do test strength and stability together, um, and they're really, really good for that return to sports status. So the forward one is really important, but to go backwards, you then go in front of the line, and same drill, but you reach backwards on the angle of the 45 as far as you can go. Look at their form. Again, they've got a tap. They can't weight bear through. And then can they go as far as they go this way, you know, like a curtsy type squat that way there as well, all right? And you're just testing, you can measure and test how far they can go on each one. Is there a discrepancy between your left and your right? Now, as I was speaking with our sports physio, Joe, this is also a really good test, um, well, strengthening work to do or drill to do for knees and ankles to actually practice this at home in those patterns but also practice your straight medial and straight lateral and straight backwards movements as part of ankle and knee rehab so what you could do is just actually just draw this in chalk on the ground at home on the concrete or done what we've done put some tape on the carpet or tape on the floorboards at home and have your own little star excursion test if you like so when you're doing ankle or knee rehab you can have your foot right in the middle and start working on how far you can go medial how far you can go lateral how far you can go backwards so when you're doing rehab drills it doesn't really matter how where the foot is okay as long as again you're still not weight bearing through that foot but when you're doing the actual test for return to sport it's the forward and the two back on the diagonals, that's the ones we care about. And you've got to, just got to make sure your foot placement is correct for if you're measuring. So again, if you're going forward, your foot, your toes on the front line. If you're going backwards, your heel is on that line. All right. Okay, so our second test when we are testing our ACL and knee surgery clients when they're returning to sport to see what their knee stability and strength is like is our sit to stand, like single leg sit to stand test. Now, this one is done on a bed or a chair, but a few things you gotta think about. You have to be like 90 degrees to the hip or level with the thigh. Now you can see this bed is therefore too high. So I've got the luxury of being able to drop that down. Some people at home may just have a chair. Now, if the chair is too low, so if you get to the point where it's past sort of 90 degrees here and you're too low, you'll need to elevate yourself up on something like a pillow or something firm, okay? So with this one, we're lucky, we can, with our clients, we can just test them and get that bed to the exact height where they are level at the thigh here. So this one, you're aiming for 22 single legs. So above 22 and you pass the test, single leg sit to stands. So with this one, again, you're gonna try, you're not allowed to push up, you've just gotta stand up, and sit down and you can put weight through that bed but you're aiming to go straight up and down at a nice even speed and get 22 out now that's six i'm going to see if i can do 22 for you so i'm not lying and this one is quite hard as far as stability as far as endurance but also when you get to that end range you start losing a bit of power you start 
getting a little bit tired. I think I'm up to 12 now. I have to be concentrating now. You can see how hard it is. I'm working hard here. Okay, 22 past the test, but that was hard, right? But as long as you pass the test, but again, compare that to the other side. Have enough rest in between to get that heart rate back, but make sure you compare the other side and see what the other side is doing, and then work on the strength and conditioning for that side to bring it up to speed so you can get to that 22. Our third test is our single leg elevated bridge test. Now this is testing your hamstring strength. Now very important for those ACL or knee surgery people who have had a hamstring graft to test them to see what it's like and how it's recovering on their way to return to sport. As well as people who've had like tendinopathies and hamstring tears, it's also very good to test their strength as well as injury prevention for hamstring in sport as well. Now to do this test, what you need is a chair or box not a low one, preferably pretty high, maybe around about 60 centimeters if you can. And you need to set yourself up that when you have one leg on the box, you are sort of less than sort of 90 degrees here, okay? So you're not sort of fully 90 degrees, otherwise when you get up to the top, you'll be in too much knee flexion. So not too far back because you don't want to end up straightening your knee. You want to be at the point where you've just got a roughly nearly 90 degrees in the knee bend, and you cross your arms across the chest because you're not allowed to put your hands down and put low through here and stability through here. You're trying to just isolate that leg. So when you come up, it is all the way to the top, so your knee is not fully straight. There's a little bend in that knee, and it's how many can you do. So this is a capacity test, if you like, to try and see how much endurance and strength have I got out of my single leg hamstring elevated bridge and how many can I do left versus right, okay? Is there a difference between my left and my right? And is that difference based on strength, left versus right, being left-handed or right-footed? Or is it based on the fact that it's the surgery leg or the non-surgery leg? Regardless, we have to have that difference within 95% left and right before we get those people returning to sport. That's really important. And this is a really good test to do. So if someone is weak on that side, they're in our strengthening program for hamstrings, and then we test them throughout that strengthening phase to get them back to sport.